Uh, John, a follow up on that first. Did the CIA warn Israel or did President Biden warn Netanyahu today about an Iranian plan to attack inside Israel within 48 hours? I'm not going to talk about intelligence matters, Peter. I think you can understand. Um, but uh, they did talk about uh, a very public uh, and very viable, real threat by Iran to Israel's security. And I think I need to leave it at that. That's really as far as I can go. On October 7th, President Biden said, my administration's support for Israel's security is rock solid and unwavering. That is not true anymore, correct? That it, no, it is true. Still it, true today. How is his support unwavering, but you're also reconsidering policy choices? Both can be true. They cannot be true. They're, they're completely different things. No. No, no. I he just, is, I'm sorry. I, he I, is I, wavering. No, no, no. Come on. How is he not that. wavering? Uh, come on. <laughs> come on now. As I said, and as it says in that readout, we made clear, and, and he made it clear to the prime minister in his call, that our support for Israel's self-defense remains ironclad. They face a range of threats, and the United States isn't going to walk away from helping Israel defend itself. That said, you can say all that, and you can act on that, and you can believe that, and the president does, and still believe that the manner in which they are defending themselves against the Hamas threat needs to change. And that is the conversation that we had today. But both things are true. Our support is ironclad and consistent. It's not going to not going to stop. It's not going to not not going to not going to waver. But will there perhaps be some policy changes we might have to make if we don't see policy changes out of Israel? Yes. How is that unwavering? It sounds like you guys are trying to have it both ways here. No, I we don't know that Israel, I can. But we are going to make all these changes because we don't support Israel. I didn't say we're going to make changes. I said we need to see well, how Israel responds to the humanitarian crises in Gaza and how they respond to the protection of aid workers. I think we can all agree. I think you would agree. You don't want to see innocent civilians killed or targeted, do you? You don't want to see uh, Gazans starve. You don't want to see famine in Gaza, Nobody do you? Wants of course to see not. That, but you're so, the policymaker and you're talking about policy changes. So, that is not what you were talking about on October 7th. Because when things it was have. Solid and unwavering. On October 7th, there wasn't near famine in Gaza. On October 7th, there wasn't um, a diminution of trucks getting into Gaza. On October 7th, we didn't see thousands and thousands of innocent people killed. I mean, I could go on and on. The, it, we're talking about a conflict now, which is dang near at six months here, this weekend, six months. And it has changed over time. And the, what the president's message today was, we need to see some changes in the way Israel is dealing with that threat. That's, that's what two good friends and allies can discuss. This isn't, about un, this isn't about changing our support to Israel or the security of the Israeli state. And I, I just have to take issue with the premise of the question. Okay, just the last one then. Where is President Biden? on any of this. When he wants to talk about how angry he is or frustrated he is about the high cost of insulin, he comes out and gives an impassioned speech. Where is he on any of this? He's been talking about this. He's been issuing statements on this. In uh, private? Uh, no. That, that statement, last I looked, was public. But right? where is he? Why isn't he here right now? I'm sure you'll continue to hear from the president about this and many other national security issues. All right, we got to wrap it up. Go ahead. 